Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Matt Brody and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to do a detailed step-by-step -step instruction of exactly how to do a CAD VAC delete on the Jeep YJ. So the reason for doing the CAD VAC delete is the Jeep YJ's 4x4 system is based on vacuum lines. But having the reliability of not having those vacuum lines do that work is huge and it doesn't doesn't sacrifice any functionality in the Jeep whatsoever. We're also going to go through and show you exactly what you can do to keep the 4x4 lights in the dash. A lot of times when people do the CAD vac delete, because those vacuum lines are now gone and that light lights up based on the vacuum lines, you lose your 4x4 lights. And so there's actually a workaround for that as well, and we're going to show you how to do that too. So stay tuned. The CAD, or central axle disconnect, is located on the back of the passenger side front axle. Step number one is to unplug the wiring and the vacuum lines connected to the CAD and begin removing the four bolts that hold it in place. You may need something like a flathead screwdriver to pry the CAD from the gasket and off the axle. A word of note, when removing the CAD, some differential fluid will spill out, so make sure you have something underneath to catch it so you don't make a mess. All right, so this is the CAD VAC system. Uh, this is what swings back and forth to engage that locking ring in the front axle. So we need to get this off because we're gonna reuse this. So we need to take this back section off because there's a bolt that uh, will come out and that'll let us take this right out. So there's two little C-clips on the either side, and uh, we just need to pop those off real quick. I'd recommend using a pick tool to get them out, and try not to let the clips go flying. However, the new parts that we are installing do have new C-clips as well, so if you lose one, it's not the end of the world. So with the first one off, this slides down, and the second one, it's a lot easier to grab, which is like a pair of needle nose pliers. And lastly, there's another big C-clip at the very, very top here. All right, so now that we've got the factory one apart and I cleaned it up with just a little bit of uh, brake clean, we'll just clean that right up, make it nice and uh, clean for your new install. So what we're putting in is the Rugged Ridge Permanent Diff Lock uh, kit and I will link to that in the description below uh, they are not a part of this channel or anything like that so this is purely for your information uh, but what it comes with is the the new bolt that's going to go inside it's also got the new C clips and things like that it has the uh, the new housing for the back also has a new gasket and some zip ties and the instructions all right, so now that we've got everything pulled out and set up, we're gonna put it all back together. So I've got the original fork from the uh, CAD vac. That's gonna go in, and you wanna make sure that it's in the right orientation. So there's two ways that it can go, and uh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's in the, the correct orientation that it came out of the original one in. All right, so in looking at this and putting it together, this little lock washer is supposed to go over here like this, but to be honest, it doesn't feel like uh, it's gonna do a very good job of doing that. Plus, it doesn't create a solid seal. So instead of using that, and I get why it's there, I'm gonna use this crush washer on here instead, and that should create a solid seal and keep any oil from leaking out. With the new center bolt threaded in, we can install the new clips around the fork. With the new hardware, we only need two clips this time. The larger third one, we won't need at all. All right, so now we've got the fork reinstalled. I haven't locked this down just yet because I want to make sure that we do that uh, 
when the time is right because I don't want to crush that washer too soon. But we've got the C-clips back in, so now this is locked in place. It will not slide, and that's the whole point. When we do that, that ring that locks the two axles together will then be locked in place by this, and we never have to worry about our vacuum lines failing on the trail and leaving us with no four-wheel drive. So then the last step is to just screw on this end piece. It's a little tight on this, not gonna lie. Don't do it by hand, it's not gonna work. Oh, there is one other little piece that you need to do. This is the refill cap for the fluid, so it's gonna go right in the top here, and you're gonna need a little hex key in order to screw that in correctly. And I'm just hand tightening stuff. I am not cranking this stuff down to like crazy levels because you don't want to damage anything. But that, that is complete. Now what we need to do is get the old gasket off. We didn't do that step the first time. We got to get the old gasket off so we can put the new gasket on and then put this back on the axle. Using a razor or scraper, simply remove the old gasket so that you can have a clean surface to mount the new gasket to. Take your time and don't rush this. Doing a bad job will mean you'll have to do it again sooner rather than later. Now you'll need to position the ring over the two sections of the axle, locking them together. I pre-mounted the gasket to the new hardware by pressing the screws through just a little. This made sure everything stayed lined up as I mounted the new permanent CAD housing. All right, so now that we got the CADVAC delete done, the next step is running the wires in order to use the transfer case to actually engage the four-wheel drive light on the dash. So that indicator light no longer works with the current setup. So essentially what will happen is we're going to be extending the cables from this all the way out to the transfer case, allowing the indicator light on the dash to come on when it senses that the transfer case is in four-wheel drive. First, roughly measure how much wire you'll need. It's better to go long at first because we'll be trimming it down at the end. Strip the ends off the wire and get them ready to be connected to the new plug. By the way, what we are essentially doing is wiring this up the way a TJ would be, with a TJ plug and a TJ transfer case sensor. Links for both are in the description below. All right, so the next step is we're gonna take our new plug for our new sensor and we're gonna wire uh, it into these extension of wires here. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one goes to which, that's on, according to this, so you just wire one to the other, and then we'll wire it up to the front and plug it in and see how it goes. I'm connecting the wires with butt splice connectors and then covering them with heat shrink. You could also use solder if you really wanted to. Unfortunately, there's not a great camera angle for the sensor and the plug but here we are at the transfer case on the driver's side. On top, you'll see wiring coming in and connecting a plug to the transfer case sensor. It's a little hard to reach, and chances are you're not gonna be able to unplug it by hand, so I'm using a long flathead screwdriver to push it up. All right, that's off. There isn't much room up here, so do the best you can, but you'll probably want a socket wrench to unscrew the sensor from the transfer case. All right, so when we go to connect the plug to the sensor, there's a little bit of a modification that we have to make. Uh, at least inside this, there's a little tab, and so it won't allow this to seat properly. So we're gonna need to make a little cut on the plug in order to make that fit. You'll need to carefully remove the O-ring from the old sensor and put it on the new sensor. With that done, it's time to install the new sensor. It's a little bit of a blind angle, so make sure you don't cross-thread the sensor and try to avoid knocking any loose dirt into the hole. It's best to put your new wires into the loom. It will protect the wires over time and keep the rest of the install a little easier. 
I just put a little bit of painter's tape at the end to keep the weight of the plug from pulling the wires out of the loom while doing the install. All right, so now that we've got our wire all tucked up into our loom, we're gonna feed it in and then go over the transfer case uh, to that plug, and then we'll take the other wire back and connect it into where the, uh, the sensor used to be with the VAC system. When threading the wires through, you'll wanna follow the wires from the passenger side of the transfer case over the transfer case into the new plug we just installed. All right, so now that we've got the loom over the transfer case, we're gonna run the rest of it back along these other looms and back over to where the back delete was. All right, so for this next part, we're actually gonna go in from the top of the engine. Now we've routed the loom all the way to the engine bay, but we've got the old connection here. You can see this is what used to be connected to the CAD back system. And we're actually just gonna bring it up and we're gonna wire it in up here and away from the suspension so it never has to drop down again. It's all gonna be tucked in away in the engine bay and it's gonna be super clean. Now we need to cut the old connector off. Strip the cables and connect the old wiring to our new wiring, again, using butt connectors and heat shrink. Then we just need to clean up our wiring in the loom, zip tie it securely and out of the way, and clip the old vacuum lines, being really careful not to cut the wiring that we are using. All right, so the last step is we need to cap the vacuum lines that we just cut. And so there's a vacuum line that runs here across the firewall and down here. So all you got to do is disconnect that, cap it off with a vacuum cap, and you're done. So now we're going to put this all uh, the hood down and we're going to turn on the car and we're going to put it into four-wheel drive and we're going to make sure that the four-wheel drive indicator light works. So all we should have to do is put the 4x4 selector into four high or four low and we should see the indicator light show up on the dash. And boom. There it is. So one of the great things about this is that when you put it into four-wheel high or four-wheel low, it's instantaneous. There is no waiting for the vacuum lines to do their magic, to pull over uh, the, the CAD and all that kind of stuff. So it's super fast, it's instantaneous, and uh, it's super awesome. All right, well, that's it. I hope you liked the video. I hope you found this tutorial very helpful. If you have a YJ, and you're looking to do the CAD vac delete, it's an awesome upgrade that you can do. Uh, it, it does take some work to do it. It's not super simple, but it's also not crazy hard. So follow these steps and you can do that too. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It helps out the channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe for all this great content and jeeping and outdoors, overlanding stuff that we're gonna be doing. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.